Nick Rains here from Leica Academy Australia. Let me share with you some of the photographs that I've been shooting with the lovely little Leica CL. So what is it about the CL that I really enjoy the most? Look, it's really hard to say, but when this camera first came out, I just fell in love with it instantly. And that, that's something that doesn't happen to me very often. I've been photographing for an awful long time now. I've used well over a hundred different types of camera. And for me to get excited about a camera when I first picked it up is, is you know, quite unusual. It's small. I mean, genuinely small. I mean, people talk about mirrorless cameras being small. Some of them, when you put a good lens on it, it's not small anymore, but this is genuinely small. In fact, I've got to say it's a little bit too small for my hands. Uh, small is good and small is bad. Small is good because it's small and light, but small can also be a little bit tricky because they can be a little bit fiddly. You may be able to see on here, I've got the little external grip fitted and that totally transforms the camera. It's almost a, a no brainer purchase when you buy the camera. You can get a little thumbs, a sort of thumb grip here, which sits, your thumb sits on it and it slides into the, uh, the hot shoe here. Uh, personally, I found that a little restricting because uh, it doesn't really hide the control wheels here, but it makes them slightly more awkward to use. You'd, you'd have to try it and see what works for your hands. But personally, this little grip here makes all the difference. But when you put it in, in it, when you get it into your hands, you just go, this just feels great. It's not plasticky. It's not you know, uh, it doesn't feel lightweight, even though it is a light camera. The, the camera, the, 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 the lens, not the camera, the lenses are made of metal here. Uh, the body, of course, is polycarbonate, like a lot of lightweight cameras are, but it's still very robust. The, the dials are nice and positive when you click them. It's got a lovely clean look, and, it, and it's got that DNA of the old original Urleica that Oscar Barnack uh, created in 1914, and that was one of the design decisions behind it. The electronic viewfinder, interestingly enough, for modern digital cameras is top left hand corner, just like a rangefinder camera. So you can shoot with it in this way, which means that you can have this eye open to look around you. And either if you're really clever, you can shoot with it open or like me, I tend to shoot with it closed. In fact, if I'm honest, I actually shoot with my left eye because that's the way I'm so inclined. But Occasionally, when I'm working in difficult circumstances, I, I want to see what's going on, and you can use that left eye. When the viewfinder is in the middle, it doesn't really matter which eye you use, your other eye is blocked, so that's another little advantage of this sort of design. The cue is the same. Uh, the SL's in the middle, I yeah, haven't really noticed it being a major problem, but it, it's a nice thing to have. Viewfinder is excellent. It's not quite up to the level of the SL2, but then no other camera on the market is. It's the best, I think, still on the market with the highest resolution, but it's still a beautiful viewfinder. And when you are looking at electronic viewfinder cameras, and if you're still shooting on DSLRs, you may have been put off by that contrasty, gritty look of some of the EVFs of um, some mirrorless cameras. This is not that. This is smooth, low contrast, very little lag. It doesn't blur when you move the camera around quickly. It's got a quite a high refresh rate, so it's excellent. And then of course, it's just so simple. I mean, there's hardly any buttons on it. I and mean, what more do you need? It's, um, it's just a sweet little camera. I use this as my walkabout camera a lot and also as a backup and a B camera for my SL2. So I'll shoot a lot of stuff with the SL2, and then I'll have this camera hanging over my other shoulder with maybe the opposite lens on it. So if I'm shooting the SL2 with say the 90 to 280 big lens, I might have the 11 to 23 on here, which is super wide. And the whole thing is so tiny that you can just sling it out of the way and not worry about it. But suddenly you need a wide shot, bring it up, shoot, away you go. Autofocus is as snappy as you would expect. It's really, really quick and snappy. Um, nice and positive, that's, that's the key. Um, and thing is, if you only took this camera with you, uh, if you see my uh, talk about the Leica Q, you'll realize that I'm, I'm saying the same thing, is that you're not compromising the image quality. There's this trap that you can fall into when you've got multiple cameras of, am I going to take my big full camera system with me today? on a casual walk with a family, it's heavy and it's large and it's clumsy. But if I take my little tiny camera, 
I'm going to be compromising the quality. And what's the odds that something amazing happens and I've only got my phone, for instance? Well, if you use something like this or the Q, you're not compromising image quality because this is 24 megapixels. And you may say, yeah, but it's only an APS-C sensor. No, you need to put that out of your mind. The fact that it's an APS-C sensor is almost irrelevant. The quality is 24 megapixels. End of story. And I could show you prints of the SL, which was 24 megapixels, and the CL, which is 24 megapixels, and you would not be able to pick them apart. And these, I'm talking about A3 plus prints here, like big prints. If you are passing one of the Leica stores in Sydney or Melbourne, you can see for yourself because I have a print box there of images that I've shot uh, on both cameras and other cameras. And I guarantee that you will not see a difference between the two, even at high ISO. So it's astonishing how good an APS-C size sensor can be. So if you have this idea in your head that APS-C sensors are somehow inferior, then you haven't seen what this camera is capable of. Anyway, enough about me raving about the camera and I could go on because I really like this camera. I think uh, I was shown this camera about a month before it was released. Um, it's one of the perks of the job, I you know, get a little bit of inside information occasionally, not much, just occasionally. I picked it up, I took a few phones with it, I went, right, how do I get one? You know, send me the bill, like take my money. And I bought one on the spot. Um, that was a demo model I had. I had to give it back. But as soon as they were available, one turned up on my, my you know, desktop and with an invoice. I, I have to pay for this, self, this stuff myself. And I don't get given it for nothing. Um, so I put my money where my mouth is. And I think that's the highest recommendation I can give. Just before I go to the pictures, just as a little aside, this is not an expensive camera. Uh, you tend to think of Leica as being like super high end, which it is, of course. But this camera is very much in that mid range of, of camera prices. So you can there's a huge number of cameras in the market that are more expensive than this. And the key thing here is that you get the genuine Leica glass. This is not some sort of kit lens or some inferior thing that's made to a price. It is the, the real deal. These lenses, absolutely superb. Um, they are absolutely razor sharp. They are beaut beautiful color rendition. They're sharp in the corners. They're lovely. They are not a, a cheap version of a Leica lens. Just want to make sure that that's clear. So let's have a look at some pictures and let me just cut to my iPad here. And first one, I did a lot of work on a book called Heart of Australia, where I went to a lot of festivals. So I'm going to go through a few of those. You may have seen some of them before in other lectures of mine, but um, this is shot on the 11 to 18 to 56, which is the little lens that comes with the camera if you buy the kit. And it's called a kit lens and the associations of a kit lens are with cheap and nasty. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. This lens is absolutely astonishingly sharp. And again, if you are able to see prints from this camera, you'll see what I mean. But it's very convenient. It's the equivalent of roughly 28 to 70 millimeters, 75, something like that. Um, so it's that lovely mid-range zoom versatility. And there's a lot of subjects you can shoot with that where you'll never need to change the lens. This is a, a style of image I shoot a lot, which is backlit. I love the way colors get picked up by backlight. So this is middle of the day with the sun not at its peak. Uh, this is Woodford, um, Woodford, yeah, Woodford Music Festival up in Queensland. And this is with the lens, which you'll see I've used a lot. And this is the 55 to 135 zoom, which is the equivalent of, let's say, an 80 to 200 zoom on other full frame cameras. It's wonderful for picking out details like this or like this. And can you see how good that out of focus background is? This is a zoom. This is a small zoom. It's not even an expensive zoom. I it, At the long end, it's f4.5. So it's not even a particularly fast zoom. Uh, and you'll still see it's got that lovely out of focus bokeh that we're always so uh, keen on getting. And Leica lenses are, are designed for this one thing. Low light, superb. This is the 35mm Sumilux. So this is the 35 1.4. Just cut out of that. That is this lens here. OK, it's uh, this is of all the lenses, this is probably my favorite. It's not the most versatile. Obviously, zooms are more versatile. But for the look, 
of this lens, you get the real lovely out of focus background, uh, that tack sharp on an eye for a portrait. Uh, if This is the lens I recommend to people to buy as their second lens. Now this shot, of course, is very low light. It's all candlelit, these are little lanterns, and uh, having an, an f1.4 lens gives you a huge advantage. Um, but the CL performs superbly in low light too. This is the performance at Woodford as well. And this is uh, stage lighting. This is this is way past sun, sunset. So it is only stage lighting. And if you've ever photographed events, you'll know how low the lighting can be. This is back to the 55 to 135. With all those flames around, there was no way we were allowed near to the stage. So I had to sit back and shoot with a longer lens. And even though it's not a fast lens, um, it's still able to produce beautiful results. This is back to the 35 1.4 again, and this is in very low light. I mean, the, the blue light on those figures was extremely low. And can you see how well it's handled the contrast as well? Those flames are really bright. So you've got shadow detail and highlight detail in very low light conditions, and that's pretty impressive. This is a rodeo at Mullawa in West Australia, and this is shot on the 11 to 23 super wide zoom. And that's probably my third most favorite lens. Actually, they're all my favorite. I couldn't really pick one. It's like so many things like, is it your, what's your favorite lens? Well, I'd say, well, what for? What, am, what, what task am I doing here? For this sort of shot where I'm very close in and I wanna be in the action, and again, my usual backlit style, uh, the 11 to 23 turned out to be perfect because I just simply couldn't get further away without the railings being in the way. And to go to put the camera through the railings, I was very close. So you really need that 11 to 23. This is me shooting at the full shooting speed of around about 10 frames a second. So not only does it uh, stand up to the quality of the, uh, the SL camera, it also shoots just as quickly. So you get this incredibly quick burst of images for, and for this sort of stuff, when you're not exactly sure when things are gonna start, it's nice to be able to fire off a burst. More rodeo stuff, same rodeo, Mullawa. This is the 55 to 135. Not allowed in the ring and for obvious reasons. So you really need to step back and make sure that you've got a good viewpoint through the railings. Um, but to get a tight shot like this, and this is full frame, this is not a cropped image, uh, that lens gives you that versatility. Same with this one, again, into the sun with the dust, uh, really picks it up. The telephoto lens compresses the perspective, really exaggerates the, the dust as well as the sun picking it up from behind. Um, shooting in autofocus, the autofocus in these situations will struggle on most cameras because you've not got much contrast. I had a very, very high hit rate with the CL, so I, I can absolutely put my hand on my heart and say the autofocus is excellent with this camera. This is the Elvis Festival, um, one of the, uh, one of the, the my most enjoyable days out. This is also the 55 to 135. It's a great portrait lens for picking out little faces. And you, again, you can see how lovely that out of focus background is whilst keeping a razor sharp image on the face. Again, the 55 to 135, picking out details. And I think I can see some text in the middle of that shot. That's my bad. <laughs> I will move over, move on from that one. This is the 55 to 135 again. Um, I saw this uh, mural painted outside the Rugby League Club um, and you can see in the glasses on the Audrey Hepburn figure there's an Elvis in there and as I was waiting a somewhat rotund Elvis wandered past and there's a pie shop next door and I thought he's going to go into that pie shop and if he does he's going to come out with a pie and walk back the way he came and he did. So one of my more amusing images from that shoot. 35mm Similux again, live performance indoor, tricky stuff. The uh, CL performed amazingly with holding the focus. Um, I'm focusing on the face, obviously, and it just picked out that focus beautifully, a very, very high hit rate. And I believe this is either 3200 or 6400 ISO. So anything you've heard about APS-C sensors being poor in low light, mm, not with the CL. This is the 55 to 135 again. Now, you might think that was look more like a 50mm 1.4 lens because of the out of focus backgrounds, but in fact, it's that straightforward 55 to 135 zoom lens, and you've got that lovely smooth bokeh in the background, which I've always enjoyed with Leica lenses. 
For picking out details, um, again, this is the 55 to 135 lens. There's a theme here, can you tell? If you want to get in tight on shots, and, and that's one of, a, one of the most powerful techniques you can use to make your pictures uh, more dramatic, is to really tighten up and simplify your images back to exactly what you're trying to show and not have anything extra in there which is distracting. So this is showing the lengths to which horse owners go to to make their horses look attractive in the ring, the plaiting and the sewing. So I wanted to get in on the hams and uh, it's a little bit difficult to get in next to the horse so shooting from a little bit higher up and a little bit further away with the longer lens was ideal. Same again, I don't want to go in the ring with these guys with axes and chainsaws swinging around 55 to 135 again. Same with this one again, they're really a bit keen on safety at these events with good reason so I was very happy to be able to stand back a bit and pick out the details this is the 35mm Sumilux again um, in really nice light. These are hand shears from a shearing demonstration. This was in Tasmania and you can see how beautifully it's handled the contrast and the texture of those blades. This is the guy who was doing the demonstration. So I was able to focus on the blades and use f1.4 and throw his face just enough out of focus so you could recognize him but so that your attention is drawn to the blades more than his face. Last couple of pictures, this is a workshop I did up in far north Queensland and we hired one of the local traditional owners of, uh, this is Mosman Gorge and he was very kind enough to uh, dress up in his traditional uh, paint and outfit with his didgeridoo just to model for us. So he's a, he's a paid model, let's be clear. Um, the guy's name's Skip and he was just delightful to work with. So we got him to perch on these boulders. And these shots are on the 60 millimeter macro on the left and the right in this shot. And then I did a portrait uh, at the end with the 35 mm Sumilux. And you can see that absolutely classic Leica look, which the, uh, all the Leica lenses are capable of getting. So that's the last of the slides. Come back to me here and look, I'm, I know I'm raving a little bit about the camera, but I do love it to pieces and I have had some very uh, successful images that I've shot with this camera. I didn't actually think when I first bought it that it would be so useful over such a long time, but when I'm working with two cameras, this is always one of them. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today and maybe you've learned something, please subscribe to our channel. And my name is Nick Rains. Thank you for watching.